In this video, I'm going to talk you through how I made this Paragon asset animated with the Live Link Face app. Uh, totally for free. Now this technique is uh, it's not hard to do. It uses the Pose asset uh, and I'll walk you through it. I recorded all this and I'm just going to talk over it. I'll just leave me through the whole thing talking as the bear. I hope you like it. Let's go. Now the way that this works is it's, it's exactly like the MetaHuman's uh, face blueprint works. So when you drive a MetaHuman face with Live Link face, uh, you can get rotations in the uh, event graph uh, and over in the animation graph, you can read in a Live Link pose and then send it into one of these kind of things that it's just called a pose. Mm, I think it's just, po just a pose asset node. It reads a pose asset um, data type. This is a pose asset data type here, and it de it's derived from an animation file, standard animation sequence. And that animation sequence, just for each frame, has an individual pose, one of the 52 blend shapes. And you can right click on this and create a pose asset out of this, and that will create a bunch of named poses. And if you uh, move or if you send in a value using one of these named channels, it will move the joints into that position. It will lerp into that position using a normalized value zero to one. And that's that's essentially how it all works. So to do this, it's very handy to have the AR kit documentation for how the the face shapes are meant to look like. It also gives you all of the names of the face shapes that you'll need, and you'll need all of these names in a list. Now, uh, this page here, you can scroll around and you can see each of the named face shapes, every shape that you need. And when you click into one of these things, you can get an illustration of what that face shape looks like. Now, the illustrations are a tiny bit hard to read. Uh, it's, you know, it's kind of pale white. There's not a lot of shadows and a little bit difficult on some of these shapes to see exactly what's happening. So you'll see later on in the video, I'm going to use uh, some other references looking specifically at what fax, uh, which is the facial action encoding system, what fax shapes are looking like for some of these uh, correlated poses. Now they have different names in the, in the fax for the, the, what they call the action units, uh, but it's similar enough. Now what we need is a complete list of these that we can uh, copy and paste into our pose asset creation operation. Uh, and you need to get these names right because if you name it wrong, you won't get the channel data across. So I've made a list here in a spreadsheet and I got that list from the Unreal Engine source. I just did a search for one of these shapes until I found the list. And then I copied the list, pasted it here and took out the comments. So there's, there's my list. I need a, a zero indexed list and the very first one of these shapes needs to be default. In the middle, I've got my named pose and on the column on the right, I'm gonna put an X when I've animated that pose and finished that pose. So I've got this Unreal Engine demo scene set up. There's uh, a bear in it and I'll quickly set up a little, uh, like a display level and then I'll export out this bear. Now this is just a regular export under the asset actions and export here. Uh, if you pick a place for it to go and then you will uh, get an options box. Uh, I picked a higher FBX version, uh, but other than that, it was the defaults. Now I'm opening up Maya. Now you can use any software you want for this. It's just gonna be setting these poses and making an FBX that you can export. So Blender should work great for this. I would have used Blender if I knew how to use it, uh, but I haven't learned how to do anything in an animation wise in Blender yet. One of these days I will. So here I've just set the LOD to show me the highest LOD level. And then now I'm gonna uh, take these, these oversized joints and make them smaller. 
And then I'm going to just start making keyframes. Now, the very first one of these, I'm going to put my my list over here. The very first one of these on frame zero needs to be the default pose. So I'm going to take all these uh, joints that are related to the face, and I'm going to add a keyframe. And then I want to start posing my frame one. So you can see here in this video, I forgot to step the timeline forward, and I'm posing this on frame zero which is wrong so i'll have to undo all that in a moment yeah undo all that no nope, wrong now step forward to frame one and, and here's where i remember how to do all this i actually need to put default keyframes on frame two because after i step off of one i need to be ready for the next pose from the default position so that's an that's a important part of the workflow so here i'm on frame one now i'm sh setting all of the poses for this particular shape and I'm using the auto keyframe button here right so it's adding keyframes for anything I move because I'm using this auto keyframe option so after I've hit that pose then I'm gonna look at my list again so I've got I blink left complete X now I look for the next one I look down left so I step over to the next frame I think about which of these joints I'm gonna be moving and I think for this one, I'm going to move some of these brow joints to get a little bit more uh, looking action. Now, I learned from doing this twice, uh, once for this demo and once before, that uh, the eyes don't really do a lot of action. So I'm going to try and be more exaggerated with this one. And you can see in my face below that I could have gone even further because the eyes, they move a bit, but they don't move a lot. And I think since this character doesn't have a pupil, uh, it would have been good to be even more exaggerated. Okay, so here I've got uh, frame number uh, two. I'm on frame number two. There's my default. There's my eye blink on frame one. And then I step forward to frame two, and I'm going to keyframe. I don't know what I'm doing here. What am I doing? I'm trying to pick out the uh, joints that I'm going to be animating for this eye look down left on frame two and I keyframe them on either side so on frame one I add a key and on frame three I add a key in the default position and then I step back to frame two my target frame confirmed by my list and now I'm gonna you know make the pose so I get the eye the main eye joint and I'm gonna just make it look down crank crank it down and then here I do some extra tweaks to the brow to get a little more of a down look happening. So yeah, I'm cranking it a little bit further. Yeah, let's just go for it. Yeah, we'll call that good enough. Now from here, I'm going to go quite a bit faster because, you know, this isn't really that fun to watch in real time. Uh, it's not really all that fun to do it in real time. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of tedious, but it's, uh, you know, it's not really hard. It's just tedious. Uh, so I'm going through here and for each of my target frames, you know, like I said, I'm just going to make sure on either side of a target frame, uh, I have enough keyframes to have those uh, activated joints in their neutral pose. Uh, if it's a preceding frame, it either needs to be in the neutral pose and keyframed, or it needs to be in whatever the target pose is of that preceding frame. And on the subsequent frame, it needs to be keyframed to be the neutral pose. Uh, and so it's really just a matter of stepping through the timeline and repeating that process over and over again. And you'll see I'm bouncing out to the AR kit documentation, looking at that face looking at, to see, you know, does the brow move on this shape? You know, is the lower uh, lower lid moving on the squint? You know, what is the squint supposed to look like? So here I am looking at the facts documentation and checking out the squint to see how much of the rest of the face should be activated when I squint. So some of this, uh, you know, it's just a bit of trial and error to see what AR kit is expecting for each of these shapes. 
and then just going through and moving things. And all the while, I am trying to be as exaggerated as I, I think I can be to, you know, maybe it could have been more exaggerated, but I, I'm trying not to be too conservative uh, because, I, I, you know, whenever you're using the AR kit, you know, you, you've got all of these values coming across the live link, and, but those values, you know, don't really ever hit all the way to one. You know, they're in that sort of middle range a lot of the time. So you want to make sure that your your extreme pose is as extreme as it can be without breaking. Uh, and it, and I, I think I could have probably gone further with the eyes. So here's me looking. I'm looking left. I'm looking right. Looking around. Uh, and, and, the, and the animated bear you see here right now is what I've made here in this video that I recorded. And one of the things I noticed is, you know, my nose, my nose is a little overly active. So maybe I pushed that one too far. And if I went back and tweaked that a little bit, maybe it'd be better. So here, uh, in this part of the video, I've moved on to the jaw. So I've finished all the eyes, did the left, did the right. Now I'm doing the jaw. And it's important to, you know, consider the tongue. And when the jaw is open, you want the tongue to go with it. Because, you know, you, you, you don't want to leave. The back of the tongue, you don't want to see the back of the tongue when the jaw opens. Um, yeah. Uh, the next one here is called mouth open. And I'm going to slow it down a little bit here because the mouth open is a little bit unique in that it's using two activations. So the mouth open pose is the pose with your jaw open but your mouth closed. The, the idea behind the pose is this is your lips stuck together while your jaw is open. And I don't think I quite got it right because I'm going to do it here and you'll see it's not quite right. So that's that's the idea. So I could push that a little further. The next up are two interesting poses. One of them is called lip. Uh, what is it called? Lip. Um, oh, yeah. Mouth funneler and mouth pucker. And I had to do a little digging around to see what's the difference between a mouth pucker and a mouth uh, funnel. And the funneler is the one you make when you're saying uh, a, a W sound, like whoosh or water. It's just it's this one. It's a little open whoosh. And the other one, mouth pucker, is your lips closed. It's like a kissy face. So it looks like that. After this is uh, mouth left and right, and this is trying to move your mouth around your teeth, and then uh, and then after that you got your um, uh, mouth smile left and right, and mouth frown left and right. Uh, mouth dimpler is is uh, these bits these bits here moving. Uh, but I'll leave it to you. You can um, you know interpret this however you want. This is how I interpret it. I also made myself a little cheat sheet, you can see there, where I tried to figure out if there's a deeper correlation to particular facts, shapes in the AR kit names. And then after all of the mouth shapes, which I'm, I'm coming up to the end, I've got mouth shrug and mouth upper up, etc. After all the mouth shapes, then there's some brow shapes. It's got a brow inner up but it doesn't have a left right inner it just has an outer left and an outer uh, right going up cheek puff is a uh, is one where you fill your cheeks up with air uh, cheek squint is just this part of your face moving up a little bit and then the nose sneer is this one with uh, the nose either sneering on the left or sneering on the right uh, and that is pretty handy because if you, you know, if I may move my mouth around a little bit and do some squinties, you can see my nose jiggle in the bear. Uh, and the very last one of these poses is the tongue out. The tongue out, uh, as you see me do it here, is a little too low. I had to go back and adjust this later. Uh, it should be more or less straight out. So here's what it looks like on the bear.
you export this, I'm using the game exporter from Maya, and then I'm bringing in this FBX, uh, and it's just a normal animation sequence at this point. There's nothing special about it, it's just a normal animation sequence. And from this, we're going to make a pose asset. To do that, you, you're going to need your list, and you're going to right-click on the anim animation asset, and you're, at the top, you choose Create a Pose Asset. It asks for the name of the animation file, and here, in this window, is where we're going to paste this list exactly in the order that we have it, and this will name all the poses. So the first one at the top is default, and then, you know, down here, we've got the jaw open, which is a great one to confirm on. And if you have anything wrong with your list or an offset or something like that, you'll see that the slider doesn't do what its label says. So you got to get that right. Now over here is an important attribute here uh, that we want to set to be additive. And I, if we look back at the animation example in the MetaHumans, you can see on their pose asset, it's set to be additive using the default pose. That's what we're going to do. So we set this to be additive. If you forget this, then your animation just doesn't come through very strong. It's just like a very weak signal. So if you're seeing, if you go through all this process and you're seeing your live link animation not working, that's that's could be what it is. It needs to be additive or it doesn't work. So here is where we create the evaluate pose node. And this is the thing that reads in the pose asset that we just created. Once you have that, it's uh, it's animation time, and it should just work. And you'll see here's me checking out my mouth closed, and I, I didn't really like how it was working, so I go back in and I tweak my pose. I go to the, the target frame, the frame number that is the mouth closed pose, and I make some adjustments, and then I'm going to re-export this same thing using the game exporter again. Uh, just overriding my, my file. So I open the animation asset, and then I'm going to re-import the animation right up at the top. And then you need to go to the pose asset and refresh this one with the update button. So you got to hit that update button if you if you want to, you know, do the round trip and tweak some things. It's a pretty easy round trip. Just a few steps. Uh, and then you've got a talking bear just like this. So there you go, that's the whole bear process, and this will work for any rigged face. If you've got a face that has a joint rig, and you can use that joint rig to pose the face into an AR kit pose, you can save that, just like I did here, as an animation file, and use the pose asset feature. Hopefully this is helpful for someone, uh, it was fun to make, and until next time, thanks again, bye.